Hi, menopause ladies, and hi to all interested in hormone balance and HRT. Does this look familiar to you? Their sleep isn't as good. Their energy isn't as good. Their mental clarity isn't as good. Their mood isn't as good. That's what happens when you have low progesterone. Here's a super quick run through of what we'll talk about today. When should I consider progesterone? Progesterone is very anti-inflammatory. It can help repair our brain and sleep, heart and bones, heart and bones. It can reduce your risk of osteoporosis. Should it only be given to women who have a womb? It doesn't seem quite right. It's a gel-filled capsule, and this is the one I take. A lot of women are told you can't have uh, progesterone. Metabolites of progesterone do not have the kind of negative effects that some metabolites of estrogen have. It's really important to take a break from progesterone treatment each month. Don't give up on your HRT because you haven't found the first type that really suits you. So first off, when should I consider progesterone for my hormone balance? When women still have their womb intact, progesterone is used to counterbalance the estrogen they take during perimenopause and menopause. Make sure you ask your specialist about this if you're only taking estrogen during this part of your life. Progesterone protects the lining of the uterus, so it keeps the lining of the womb thin. So if it's given every day, usually women don't have bleeding because it keeps the lining of the uterus or womb thin. If the lining of the womb is thin, you can't shed the lining and therefore you wouldn't notice any bleeding unless there is another underlying issue, which I'll address a little later. Ladies, natural micronized progesterone is not just good for your uterus and the other estrogen dominant conditions we know of. It's also great for your brain and sleep, heart and bones, heart and bones, heart and bones, brain and sleep, heart and bones. Ladies, your body needs progesterone. Let's look at the role of progesterone. In the reproductive years, Progesterone is secreted mainly in the second half of your menstrual cycle, the luteal phase. It prevents PMS, bloating, irritability, anxiety, breast tenderness, and migraines by balancing the estrogen that can promote these symptoms. It also tones down the heavy flow and eases painful periods. Progesterone is made primarily in the ovaries as well as the placenta during pregnancy. The adrenal glands also produce small quantities. I've learned some really important aspects about progesterone that extend beyond this common use. Brain and sleep, heart and bones, heart and bones, heart and bones. Our brains can also produce progesterone. And because progesterone is very anti-inflammatory, it can help repair our brains if our brains are damaged in any way and it helps our brains to function. It also helps build our neural pathways. Progesterone also is very anti-inflammatory in our body. Brain and sleep, heart and bones, heart and bones, heart and bones. Progesterone protects the heart and has anti-cancer effects, particularly against endometrial and breast cancers. Uterine fibroids and ovarian cysts can indicate insufficient progesterone. We also know that progesterone can help build bones so it can reduce your risk of osteoporosis. And finally, progesterone relaxes and calms. It reduces worry and nervousness and provides better and deeper sleep. So you can see it's a very important biologically active hormone itself. Now, what about all the women who don't have a womb? So with all these extra benefits, should it only be given to women who have a womb? It doesn't seem quite right. It's also great for your brain and sleep, heart and bones, heart and bones, heart and bones. Some women who are on progesterone have had a hysterectomy and then they were told they can come off their progesterone and they found that they've really missed it. They found that their sleep isn't as good, their energy isn't as good, their mental clarity isn't as good, their mood isn't as good. As these are all hormone imbalance symptoms, when they actually go back on progesterone, they feel a lot better. So people can still have progesterone even if they've had a hysterectomy. And it's important to discuss this with a doctor who really understands the effects of progesterone in the body. Everyone wants to feel their best and be healthy. Now, what is the best way of having progesterone? It's a gel filled capsule. And this is the one I take. It's called Utrogestin. And this contains something called micronized progesterone. It's been micronized 
in that progesterone is ground down very, to very small particles, and then it's suspended in some oil, and it's done like this so we can absorb it. Because progesterone is quite hard to absorb into the body, the older type of progesterones are all tablets, and they can be absorbed quite easily, but they don't actually have the same reaction in our body as pure progesterone. It's a bit like putting a key in a lock that hasn't been cut properly. You go into the lock, but it won't turn properly. And that's similar to the progestogens, the synthetic progesterones. They have some effect on our cells, but they won't have the same biological effects. And often, actually, they have side effects. A lot of women are told, you can't have progesterone. You can't have HRT because the pill didn't suit you. Well, this is very different because it's the natural progesterone. So let me be clear here. Micronized progesterone does not have the side effects found with synthetic progestins. Micronized progesterone does not inhibit the estrogen positive effects of improving good cholesterol. So it is the best progesterone to take with estrogens. Let me explain. When you take estrogen as part of hormone therapy, it can have a good effect on your cholesterol levels. Specifically, it can increase the levels of HDL cholesterol, which is often called good cholesterol because it helps keep your arteries clear and reduces the risk of heart problems. Micronized progesterone, because it's very similar to the progesterone your own body naturally makes, doesn't interfere with estrogen's positive effect on your good cholesterol. In contrast, some other types of synthetic progestins might lessen this beneficial effect of estrogen on cholesterol. So when choosing a progesterone to take with estrogen, micronized progesterone is often considered the best choice because it allows you to keep those lipid and heart healthy benefits of estrogen. Also, there is a lower risk of blood clots with micronized progesterone. Unlike some synthetic progestins, micronized progesterone is less likely to increase the risk of blood clots, making it a safer option for many women. If you take natural progesterone orally, it does get metabolized and will be broken down to other substances in the body through the liver. Approximately 90% of oral progesterone is converted into progesterone metabolites. So if you're taking a typical dose of 100 milligrams of oral progesterone, approximately 10 milligrams will enter your bloodstream as unchanged progesterone. The effects of the 90% metabolites can differ among individuals. It's affected by each person's unique metabolic processes and liver functionality. Due to this variation, your healthcare provider may suggest different methods of administration, such as vaginal or transdermal routes for certain patients with particular conditions. This approach is tailored to address the distinct ways in which different bodies process these substances. It's important to note that the metabolites of progesterone do not have the kind of negative effects that some metabolites of estrogen have. I will talk more about the metabolites of both progesterone and estrogen and what you should be aware of in another video. So if you haven't tolerated oral progesterone, you might actually tolerate vaginal progesterone and it works very quickly. There's topical progesterone. Progesterone is the most fat soluble hormone and progesterone cream is well absorbed topically through the skin. Many physicians still believe this form will not protect the endometrial lining when taken with estrogens. However, research shows it is protective. Topical progesterone is not broken down by the liver the way oral progesterone is, so the dosage is much less. The most commonly prescribed progesterone cream is 2%, delivering 20 milligrams of progesterone per milliliter. It can also be prescribed up to 4%, delivering 40 milligrams of progesterone per milliliter. Creams can be applied at a variety of sites and you can rotate, for instance, neck, inner arms, inner thighs, palms of the hands. It's really important to take a break for about five days from progesterone treatment each month. Progesterone receptors can become overloaded 
or oversensitized and can be non-responsive. There are exceptions. For example, a woman who has, for instance, fibroids may be counseled to use progesterone cream without a break. So don't give up on your HRT because you haven't found the first type that really suits you. Taking the estrogen and progesterone separately is actually really a good thing because sometimes we can increase the estrogen without increasing the progesterone dose, or sometimes we can increase the progesterone without increasing the estrogen dose. I apply my estrogel in the mornings and take my micronized progesterone orally in the evenings. Most women find they sleep really well on progesterone. And this too is my experience. Say hello to good night's sleep and goodbye to hormone imbalance. Some other things you need to keep in mind when on your, you're on your HRT is monitoring for your symptom improvement, ensuring symptomology isn't caused by other factors, and regularly checking hormone levels is crucial. Common side effects you might experience when trying to balance your hormones, breast tenderness, or bloating usually occur in the first three months and often diminish over time. If side effects persist or worsen, consult a healthcare professional. Bleeding is another common side effect, and this can be alarming, especially if you haven't had periods for a while. This is usually due to estrogens stimulating the uterine lining, with progesterone taking some time to thin it out. It's generally advised to wait for three to six months to see if the bleeding subsides, but any persistent or worsening of these symptoms should be checked sooner. Most instances of bleeding on HRT are related to the treatment. Consistent progesterone use can sometimes lead to light, regular bleeding, which is typically not a cause for concern. However, persistent or heavy bleeding needs to be further investigated and it often involves an ultrasound to examine the uterine lining. Various conditions, such as polyps, adenomyosis, or fibros, can cause bleeding, so it's not always attributed to HRT. Interestingly, continuous progesterone use with HRT has been shown to reduce the risk of endometrial cancer compared to not using HRT at all. For those who experience bleeding while on progesterone, increasing the dose or using a vaginal preparation can be effective. Now, if you found this video helpful, please share, like, and subscribe to our channel. In my next video, I will be addressing testosterone. I hope you'll join me.